Hi, I'm Jason Hobbs. This is example 22 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. And this time we're doing version two of my products, get online and get organized, which we visited in example 13 for those keeping score at home. So what's the point of the strategy? It's an ounce of strategic planning, saving you a pound of your resources, if not more. And the way that I organize a digital marketing strategy, and we're going to walk through each one, there's the six steps. So the first step is research. And the idea behind it is to what I'm doing is I'm putting together what's called a SWOT chart. So strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats specific to one brand. The idea behind that is to have that SWOT chart and it's a living document because you're going to update it over time because things change, right? The idea behind it is it's to inform decisions specifically starting with what's the goal of the strategy, what's the customer point of view, and what's that customer point of view's pressing problem. So some of the questions here as well as some of the reports that i might run as i'm putting together my swap chart doing my research step there's some examples but it's always going to be specifically contextual to it individual brand right and the goal so for me it's to lead the public conversation about how i organize a digital marketing strategy and i'm focusing specifically on local business owners and i'm focusing specifically on local business owners that are unsettled and confused by digital. Now, the customer point of view is those local business owners who are unsettled and confused by digital, right? And the problem is there is no frictionless access for them to get online. And it's there's definitely nothing you know, for them to own their own contextual digital marketing strategy. So, the idea behind that is they understand it enough to control it. These are people that are unsettled and confused by digital, right? So that's a problem. It's a big barrier. And with the ability to go direct to consumer that the internet provides, that's a really big disadvantage that offline and staying offline businesses are encountering. So the second step is the digital foundation. And I break that up into three parts. So I start with the website and the way that I explain it is digital office, right? So if you have an offline business, which I'm talking about local business owners, right? Then most all of them do. They already have some physical representation of their business. What I want them to understand is that their website and it's associated or attached store is part of the digital representation of that same business so in it they're, they're not mutually exclusive you can have offline and online versions of the same business actually you should i start with the home page when you're putting together your website and the idea is you're basically putting together the front lobby right where do people walk in to the offline version and so that's kind of how i organize it or you know how I demystified the website and building a website and all that over the years is that I just learned to start with the home page and I use the Essence Pro theme. It's a Genesis child theme. And if you've never bought anything from studiopress.com, it's 130 bucks total for it. And what, what that allows me to do is I know that when I build a website, all I have to do is make sure that all the home page, the messages, you know, the way that I want it, right? And then from there, that's gonna happen through widgets. I'm gonna only have to use, do the widget areas that I need on the home page. And then from there, I need to make sure that there's a, I like to put a menu at the top and bottom and then make sure that those pages are populated and voila, you have a website. You can add as much, you can build as much onto that as you want over time, but you just, you need that initial place, right? And so here's an example of my homepage. Actually, this is my homepage currently. This is the updated version. And the idea is to break the ice, introduce myself, and quite literally look you in the eye is kind of how I look at it, right? And so from there, if you already know, I want to help you get to where you want to go quickly. So if you're looking to work with me, do you already have a website? Yes, click here, no click there. And then the next step you can see is, I'm showing examples 
of how I organize a digital marketing strategy because that's my goal, right? All right, so here, as you can see, I have, and I'm gonna probably change this over time, or I know I'm gonna change it over time. It just, we'll see. But once you scroll lower, this is basically my call to action, right? I have two products that, I'm, that I've been selling for over a decade now, and that's getting online and getting organized. So, and I've been dealing with small business owners, right? and local business owners, etc. So the both products, to be very clear, they both include the website, they both include the store, and they include the d documented digital marketing strategy. And then you have your choice of do you want it to play out over six months, that project or over six weeks. So the digital store, that's friction free access to buy. And so when you have WooCommerce, which is what the store is built with on the website, it's built around what they call a shop page. You can change the, the name of it and the slug and so forth if you want, but it's gonna be that one place that everything kind of spawns from. So that's the, the front door, the threshold, if you will, into the actual online store. Well, I'm not using the shop page because I wanted to have a very specific experience. When someone's ready to buy from me, I'm not going to ask them to go to the cart I'm going to have them click a button and it's going to take them directly to checkout. So what happens is they go directly to checkout and pay and then they go to the success page and then we start the project is how it works. So just keep in mind, like it's, it's using WooCommerce, but it's not the typical flow. If you go and download, you know, if you go install WooCommerce on one, a WordPress site of yours, just so you we're clear. So the digital catalog, like I was saying, there's there's two products. Get online and get organized. And each of them has their two options, which is six months or six weeks, right? So the six month project, they go ahead and make the $500 down payment. The six week project, they go ahead and make the $2,500 down payment. And here is the product, the price, and this is a pricing table that is part of, I, I mean, I tweak the colors some, but it's the, it's built into Essence Pro. So the, um, and as you can see, like they click either of those two buttons and what happens is it takes them directly to checkout. And if they're a returning customer, they can log in. If not, if they want to keep, you know, shopping, they have the ability the ability to go to the cart and whatever. But the big thing is I want them to go ahead and you know buy. I mean, I only offer two and they don't need to buy buy them, you know, both, right? So the as you can see here, the credit card I'm using Square on this website. And then success, once they once it's processed and it works, they come here and they click that button and it's going to take them into drift.com, which I use for my email as well as my live chat, and it'll automatically have them schedule the first call, the first research call, and gives them some additional information about what I need from them. And you know, so it just starts the conversation really. And so the media archive, I'm going to create all three types of media, video, audio, and written slash images. And I want the main archive where I store that at, where those are kept, the, the the main tapes, if you will, or I can't think of the right name for it, but you, I think you get what I'm saying. I wanna keep that on land that I own, right? Cause that's, it's a brand asset. So jasonhotsllc.com forward slash blog is where you can go and you know see, like this one will be showing up there shortly, actually tomorrow is when it'll come out on Monday. So I'm recording it on Sunday. And here's an example of one of the actual blog posts and you can see that it has the embedded video as well as it has the embedded audio and it has the link to the demo and it has the slide deck embedded. And then once you scroll below it, you see, once again, my offer, right? <laughs> so the audience is the third and my, okay, so two quick suggestions. When, if you're going to do your own media, here are here's what I've learned. Deep breath, be yourself. You want people to be able to relate to you. You want them to feel, come, and that's going to come from you being yourself, not you trying to be something you think they're going to be or they want you to be. It doesn't work that way. Because 
when we watch it, we're going to decide if we, you know, if we agree or not. And the ability to actually repel and then and attract, that's good. You don't want to be everything to everybody, right? So anyway, the other thing that I've learned, it's just tell, the, tell your brand story and start with the origin story. And then beyond that is you really do have to commit to a weekly list of media deliverables that your brand is going to deliver and publish, put out to public week in and week out. Because it doesn't just happen overnight. It ha That consistency has to be there before you know, the audience really starts growing and so forth. The other thing that I've learned is focus on your customer, full stop, business period, like customer intimacy marketing strategy is basically you're marrying customers as opposed to trying to win one night stands from them. So, and that's fantastic direct to consumer it, with the internet, right? So focus on your customer. And what I mean by that is just start by document your answer to questions that you're seeing from customers. Because if you have an offline business, right, you're seeing stuff, that's what happens. So start there and then you can, you'll find other things you want to do, et cetera, other additional stuff to do. The other thing is B here is video, audio, and written versions. So just have all three so that they can choose. That's focusing on your customer. And then consistent, committed action. That's the other thing. Once they start to expect you to be there, you have to make sure that you're there. And so, and that was the other thing about you know, commit to a weekly list, et cetera, is you have to be there before they show up, right? And you have to be there consistently before they show up. So for instance, with me doing examples, I only started in November of 2018. And, you know, I'm doing two a week, but the idea is it's going to take 2019, 2020, 2021 in order for the audience to really grow is the idea. So, but you have to have that consistent committed action. Now, my audience point of view is those local business owners and their business is either offline or disappointingly online. So, and there's so many different ways that you could define that. Like they can have a Facebook page and that does okay, but they don't have a website. And then other people will have a website. They won't have a Facebook page. And, you know, the website does nothing for them. And so it's just, however it is, is always disappointing. So the show format, as far as for me, is the topic, obviously, is how I organize a digital marketing strategy. And then every episode is from a single point of view. And obviously this one being from my point of view, right? So, and then I lead with the video episodes. I create a slide deck. That's what I'm using as far as to record this and this video. And then you know, it, the slide deck is to create the video and then the video lets me create an audio version and a written version as well with images. I can take screenshots if I want. And then all media types in each blog post as I showed earlier. So the show schedule, Mondays and Thursdays, I was trying to, you know, I was gonna say, hey, at this time each day, but no, <laughs> they're gonna be out. I'm going to get one out every every Monday and Thursday come hell or high water. And sometimes hell and high water comes. So it's late, <laughs> you know, in the evening, but the end of the day, that's just how it works. All right. So the media creation, it's a process. So, and it's an iterative process. So for instance, with me, as I alluded to previously, I start with a slide deck. I use Soapbox by Wistia. I have their pro version. So it lets me download the MP4 file and do some editing on it. So I use Soapbox by Wistia to record it. I download that file and then I put that in iMovie, do some light editing. And then from there, I'm able to put out the different media deliverables. And what are some examples? Well, there's the two episodes every week, Monday and Thursday, but there's also gonna be a LinkedIn version for each because it has to be under 10 minutes to upload natively to LinkedIn. And then there's going to be an audio version of each, and there's going to be other stuff as well. So here are the slides. I just, I just wanted to show a quick example. And then this is Soapbox by Wistia. This is my account with them, and you are a screenshot from it. And now the media, it's all about attention. You have to get at people's attention. You have to keep people's attention. And I talk to one person each time, and I'll let you know how successful it is or not. But I love the idea 
of interact, you know, creating something for one specific person in the belief that other people will be able to extract learnings from it and apply it to their specific situation, even though it's not specific to them, it's specific to someone else, but they're going to find similarities because that's what we do as people is my belief. So the other thing is we get better with experience and repetition. The more times that you make a video, the more times that you make audio podcast episodes or write a blog post or write a book or, you know, whatever, it's always going to get better. The more times that you do it, you need that experience, that repetition, you need both because you're learning as you're doing it and you're getting repetition and both of those will improve the product. So make and share your video every time. If, if you've learned anything from me, from my mistakes, do this. Over the past probably four years, I can't tell you how many videos I've made. And this is more at the beginning of that four years. <laughs> like I would, the number of videos that I put on my YouTube channel, Facebook, whatever, between the start of Jason Hobbs LLC and today, right now, it's minimal. It's the percentage that actually made it on to the public view. So much stuff that quote unquote, I created and put on the shelf. I created, so I've been doing all this repetition and so forth and I've accrued a ton of experience, but I, ha I don't have as much of it as I should because I should have put all that out as the point. So iterate your creation process. Here's a very general one, but the, the key is this. It's not the steps and how specific they are. It's the fact that you have a way, a series of steps that produces something specifically. So these steps are mine, right? And, or the general version of mine, right? And what happens is if I do all A through F, it puts out a video. So that's what you need. It doesn't, you know, and so for me, it's plan it, shoot it, edit it, publish it. Publishing it is I'm putting it in Wistia and then I'm going to embed it on my website. Distributing the video is putting it to all the other places and then promoting it obviously is letting, you know, promoting it on the other places, promoting it on my, I just want more eyeballs on my media is the idea behind the promoting it. So the media distribution, the goal is to give them what they want, where they want it, how they want it, every time they want it. And so with video, I go to Wistia from my website. I also upload to Facebook brand page, to LinkedIn, my account on LinkedIn, to YouTube, my YouTube channel. And then I also put my audio version in anchor.fm and that pushes it out or syndicates it to 10 different podcasting platforms for me. And then the written and images, obviously it's on my blog. So the fourth one is the prospects. And there's two ways, two parts of this. There's the digital offer, because in order to know if somebody's a prospect, they have to have an offer to be a prospect for, right? And then the other thing is you have to be able to bring them into the store, so to speak, and process their payment and you know deliver them their goods and get them all the way. Like that entire cycle has to play out. And so, and I refer to it as the customer attention cycle because we're focusing on when are they paying attention to the brand. So digital offer, rather than the four P's of marketing from the bygone days of the industrial revolution, et cetera, I use solution, access, value, and education. I first learned this from Greg Ciotti. At the time, he was the uh, head of marketing at helpscout.net, I think it is. So. And he, I think he moved on, but I'm not sure. So solution, AKA product, for me, it's the get online product and the get organized product. And there's two variations of each. There's the six month project timeline or the six week project timeline. And as far as access, they get access to it from the sales page, right? Which is the get dash online and get dash organized. And then once they buy it, they get it access is through me, through our interactions, because I'm their personal guide through it. And it won't be like that forever. My goal in 2019 and 2020 is to begin hiring and building my staff. I'm still a one person shop, 12 years or however many, 2008, so 11 years in. All right, so the value, AKA prices, so they get my personal service. That's something that, 
to have one-on-one -on -one interaction with a person that can actually answer your digital marketing questions and isn't doesn't have an agenda other than the only agenda that I have is to educate your decision because it's your gig, right? Like I'm helping you. I'm because marketing, strategic marketing is my background, my life's work, it's my obsession, however you want to, those all apply, they're all legit. So it's not me to talk you into anything, it's to help you make the decision for yourself. So that is in having someone that you can build a relationship long-term, that's the goal, right? So it's that personal service, and then our interactions are on your time. and. That's something that most aren't going to do. You're, they're going to fit you into their plan, their system, their whatever. You're going to need to conform. I conform individually because every single one of my customers is always different. They all have very similar things. Don't be wrong. They have ton, loads of similarities. But at the end of the day, when you're talking about one person point of view, one customer POV and another, so me and... Beyonce, two completely different, although they're similar, you know, see what I'm saying? So it, making it on your time, that's something that people don't really get until they've been my customer for a while. And then they really enjoy that. Uh, Long-term strategic thinking kind of goes, says for, you know, speaks for itself. So the education or promotion portion. So here I'm talking about what's my voice kind of, what am I talking about? Well, the communication that I'm going to put out to people in order to get their attention to find out if they actually qualify for my product is I want to talk about organizing a digital marketing strategy first and foremost, and then the benefits of that and the steps to do that. And then and being specific to a local business owner and especially one that's unsettled and confused by digital. So the customer attention life cycle is for me, I'm set it up in four steps. There's strangers because they don't know me. I don't know them. Some of them will choose to become an audience member. Others will also move forward as a qualified prospect. And then some will decide to become a customer. My goal isn't to talk you into anything or anyone into anything. It's to give you an offer and give you a chance to buy something that you want to buy is the idea. All right, so the fifth step is customers. And the way that I divide customers up currently is the customer conversation and the customer feedback loop. So the conversation, I want to relate to people. I want to be helpful to people and I want to understand people. So that's where the segmenting their customer POVs. I want to start to understand about them because the way I talk to a $40,000 a year man and a hundred thousand dollar a year woman that you're going to talk to them differently right especially if one's 60 and one's 15. you see what i'm saying so and then beyond that i want to qualify them because i'm not going to be for everybody so i need to find out if there is even a possibility because if not i don't want to waste my time or theirs right and then beyond that, it's to make contextual offers because I've gotten to know them, right? I start to understand what they're thinking, feeling, so forth. And that allows me to make increasingly contextual offers. So the customer conversation, I'm breaking it down into live chat, email, video calls, and phone calls. And beyond that, and with the phone, like they are, it's also texting, of course, my clients have access to do that. And it, you know, as long as we respect each other, I've never had any trouble as long as there is that respect. And I've had to fire some customers. I haven't had to fire very many at all because it's a mutual, as long as there's that mutual respect, that's the only way a two-way conversation occurs, right? And so the customer feedback loop, I wanna email them on a scale of one to 10, how likely are they to share Jason Hobbs and gatherup.com is what I use, and I've used them for years. And so they ask that one to 10, that NPS, it's net promoter score question. And based on replies, if I reply one to eight, I'm put into what I refer to as a customer service queue. If they give me a nine or a 10, then I thank them and I give them the an invitation to share that publicly. And I share a bunch of links to my different profiles for their convenience. All right. So Number six, step six is campaigns. I have three primary 
categories of campaigns to get attention, to keep attention, and administrative. So in the administrative is really just making sure that the brand and its online presence is has a great relationship with the rest of the web the rest of the internet worldwide. So websites and social media sites and so on and so forth. All right, so the, an example of getting attention is what I'm calling, for me, I'm doing it, it's break the ice, that's the campaign. So are you ready to get online? Are you ready to organize your digital marketing strategy? That's the gist of it, although those won't be, they're probably not gonna be the actual headlines that I may do some, I'll probably test them, those, but I'm thinking it's gonna be more talking about the problems, you know, hey, are you having trouble with whatever, you know? The second example is keeping attention. And in this instance, I'm starting email and I'm an I'm email list. I'm going to, I'm starting and I have to set it up as soon as I finish this video. Uh, but it's an email list and it'll be in drift.com because that's my live chat and emails through them. And it's going to be about my procedure for organizing a digital marketing strategy. Basically, think about I'm doing all of the media as how I organize a digital marketing strategy, right? And so the email list is a direct tie to that. So what I'm thinking, my general plan is every blog post, I'm going to use the widget area that shows up directly after it to invite them to join my email list if they want to be part of my discussion about how my procedure in, you know, how I organize a digital marketing strategy. So do you, and the idea would be to keep them, the start a conversation with them, right? And let it play out over email and live chat. And one big thing is, Anytime I send an email to my email list, if anyone <laughs> deigns to reply, it's going to come directly to me. So you just, it's that, once again, it's that focusing on the customer. So local citations, I don't really have to worry about this, but using local citation builder service of brightlocal.com, you can get your, all of your different profiles for your brand. You can have them all updated and make sure that they're all correct. And you can obviously use that information to build other you know, new profiles and they're able to help with all of that. And it's typically like two to five bucks a profile. So if you wanted to do this yourself, it's gonna run around 748 to start. That's the Essence Pro theme. That's the managed WooCommerce hosting at Liquid Web. That's their $39 beginner plan. The 50 bucks a month is for at drift.com is for two live chat operators and the email. And then a hundred bucks a month for wistia.com. That's for the video hosting and analytics. Gatherup.com for the customer feedback loop. Yoast for, you're gonna want the premium SEO plugin. And there's probably some other Yoast plugins and probably some other premium plugins you'll end up wanting to add, but you, you definitely wanna start with the premium SEO plugin by Yoast. It's only like 90 bucks a year, well worth it. And then 300 bucks a year for wistia.com soapbox. That's what I'm using to record this on my desktop. And then 130 bucks for that studio press, like I mentioned. So that'd be like 750 and then 229 a month. If you have questions, my email and my smartphone, feel free to text me. Just give me some idea. If you if you decide to call me, leave a message because if I don't know your number, I'm not going to answer. But I always check the messages just in case, and I I'll get right back to you. And then what's next is example 23 will be out Monday, January 10th of example 23 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. Thanks, and have a great one. I'll see you then.